Good evening. I'd like to gavel this meeting to order. My name is Christine Snow. I'm vice chair of the Zoning Board of Appeals, and I will be temporarily chairing the meeting. Um, I would like to invite everyone to do the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Thank I'd like to welcome everybody to um, the August 14th meeting of the Scarborough Zoning Board of Appeals. The meeting will now come to order. This is a public proceeding, and unless the board specifically votes to go into executive session, the public has the right to hear everything that is being said and to view all of the exhibits that are presented. Please notify the chairperson if you are unable to hear or see the proceedings. The board works from a prepared agenda and will take up tonight's items in the following order. Approval of minutes from the July 10th meeting. Approval of draft written decision, appeal number 2762. Appeal number 2761. And zoning board comments and adjournment. There are no table tabled items on the agenda tonight. In each instance, the burden is upon the applicant to demonstrate compliance with each of the criteria or provisions of the applicable appeal. The board will ask questions as necessary to understand the nature of the appeal as fully as possible. When all testimony has been heard, the chair will close the record and the board will adopt findings of fact for each criterion of the appeal and vote to determine if the applicant has met the burden of proof necessary to meet that criterion. It is important to note that if any of the appeal or special exception criteria have not been met, the board must deny the appeal or application. In many cases, the appellant or the landowner may have a personal problem which prompted the request for the variance. Please understand that this is not legally relevant to the appeal, no matter how sympathetic the board may be to the appellant's situation. After the board votes on the merits of each criterion, a motion may be made to approve the appeal, and if there is a second, discussion will follow. The board will then state conclusions of law based on the findings of fact to support a decision on the motion. In most cases, the board will request that staff prepare a draft written decision based on the stated findings and conclusions, as well as the audio, video, and supporting materials in the record for approval at the next meeting. A general vote will then be taken on the appeal. If the majority of the voting members present vote in the affirmative, the appeal is approved. If the majority of the voting members vote in the negative, the appeal is denied. The board's decision stands as of the date the vote was taken, regardless of the approval of a final written decision. Generally speaking, appeals from adverse decisions must be filed with the Superior Court, except as otherwise provided by law, within 45 days of this board's decision. Also, if anyone present at this hearing may wish to preserve your individual right to file any such appeal, you must be certain that the board's record evidences your appearance this evening and the basis for your support or opposition. Again, we remind everyone that this is a public proceeding. You have the right to hear and see what is happening. All persons speaking will be asked to first state their name and address or affiliation, and all board members and interested parties are asked to direct their questions through the chair. At this point, I'd like to make a motion to elect Richard Silkman as temporary chair for the evening. Second. I second the motion. <laughs> Thank you. All in favor? Okay. Do you need anything here? No, okay. Uh, you take so. yours. I'm going to take this. You're legal. 
Thank you. Okay. Hi, my name is Rich Selkman, and I'm just stepping in for Michelle for this evening as Christine. chair. I'm, I'm sorry, Christine. Michelle is next. Next. Um, <clears throat> before we do begin, I do note that um, both Joe and Kyle are alternates, and because we have vacant absences tonight, they two of them will be elevated to be voting members of the board for today's meeting. Um, <clears throat> the next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes for July 10th, 2024. Those <clears throat> minutes were in your packet. Um, could I have a motion to approve those? Second? Second. Um, is there any discussion about them? Anybody have any comments or concerns about the minutes? I was not at the meeting, but I'm prepared to vote on them. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Okay. In that case, all in favor of approving the minutes is written. Anybody opposed? No. Okay, the minutes are approved. <clears throat> the next item on the agenda is the approval of the draft written decision, <clears throat> appeal number 2762. Um, for those of you who've just to reflect, you know, refresh your recollection, <clears throat> that was the coffee uh, business down on Black Point Road. <clears throat> there was one issue that was <clears throat> sort of outstanding at that uh, dis discussion about that appeal, and that was the issue of whether the lease permitted um, that kind of activity, business activities, to take place. Um, since then, we have now received, Brian, is that correct? Everybody's seen a copy of that? We've received a, <clears throat> an amendment to the lease that allows for the home occupations to exist. That's correct. We received the, uh, the, the new <clears throat> revised <clears throat> lease. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> are there any discussions or issues associated with that appeal? Okay. Could I have a motion to approve it? Motion to approve. Second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Anybody opposed? Okay. <clears throat> so <clears throat> special exception permit 2762 has been approved. The next item on the agenda <clears throat> is... Appeal number 2761. Uh, this is a miscellaneous appeal by John J. DeSanto on behalf of Ann John's Restaurant located on Route 1. Uh, we have <clears throat> information about that appeal uh, as well as some additional documents um, to consider. Um, but at this point, I think it's appropriate. To, does anybody have any questions before we hear from the applicant on this appeal? Okay, we're, if you would like to take the microphone and let us know. <clears throat> um, I brought these to display. Uh, do you come up there or can you also come here? Oh, yeah. Thanks. <clears throat> Would you please introduce yourself and begin? Hi there. Uh, my name is John DeSanto, and I'm here for uh, a variance for. Uh, and John's restaurant uh, for the resumption of uh, operating as a restaurant. I'm here to address any of your concerns. Uh, I'm a little under the weather tonight. It's, it's been uh, a long haul getting the place, bringing it back to its former glory. But uh, uh, I'm, I'm prepared to show, I think there was some concerns in the last meeting about the operating system, the sewer, uh, the overboard discharge. 
um, the prior tenant that was there before me, um, uh, to say the least, he, he, he really didn't know how to take care of it or, or operate it. I uh, installed it, owned and operated it for 35 years, so I have a good general knowledge of how it operates, how it functions, any repairs that need to be made to it. And I think grease was a major concern in one of those, uh, I think the last meeting, the board meeting. And uh, uh, it, if you look at this diagram that I have here in the photos, you'll see I have installed a new grease separator. Um, the main reason I think grease can get into uh, a, a waste discharge system is uh, if your grease traps aren't clean and you don't have a good grease separator. So, you know, I have taken the necessary steps to make sure that this system is not only functioning properly, uh, but maintained uh, more, more or less on a daily basis. Um, it's how I make my living, my livelihood, and I take it very seriously. Um, yeah, got a good track record with Bill Johnson from the DEP, 30 some odd years. Um, his brother before him, and I think Bill's been there for 20, uh, and his brother 10 years prior to that. So uh, we have a good rapport with the DEP. Uh, uh, let's just say I'm a good student, and uh, I think those concerns uh, have been addressed. I don't think you're gonna have an issue. Um, in fact, I, I know there won't be an issue uh, as long as I'm taking care of it. So. Uh, we do have, uh, I, I've got some notes there for you. I'm, I'm open for any questions uh, you may have on other issues pertaining to this matter. Thank you. <clears throat> what we're going to do is go through the criteria yes. that you have to meet in order to satisfy the, uh, <clears throat> the appeal. And so I think the best way of doing that is you prepared a document for us and we can get that information into the record. Oh, and good. As, as issues come up, the board may have questions on some of, of what you've pre presented to us. So why don't we go through that? Sure. <clears throat> My understanding is that what you're, what you're looking for is an appeal to resume operation of the restaurant. Correct. Correct. Um, and <clears throat> in terms of the criteria, uh, the first criteria is that the proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhealthy conditions by reason of sewage disposal, <clears throat> emissions to the air or water, or other aspects of its design or operation. And could you please describe to us how you intend to meet that criteria? Well, uh, without sounding redundant. Um, Don't worry about redundancy. Part I, of this yeah. is to be redundant, to make sure that it's in the okay, record. Okay, um, you know, I have... Uh, taken the necessary steps to make sure that there's no, not going to be any hazardous <coughs> um, uh, wastewater that's not treated, or uh, I, I think the big concern was grease, but uh, I never had an issue with grease. Uh, when I, uh, I, I installed a, a new grease separator that doesn't allow grease to get into the system. So um, if you look at the report that I just, put, I, I gave you guys all a report of Bill Johnson uh, from the DEP, he was there two days ago. And uh, we meet the requirements and it was satisfactory to uh, the license conditions and they were all met. So, you know, he approved it and, and he also did test water samples. There's pictures on the last page of that report uh, that you all have. Um, which shows the clear effluent um, with the uh, treated water. Goes through a chlorinator, then a dechlorinator. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> In terms of inspections, <clears throat> how frequently <clears throat> do you anticipate or how frequently will the DEP make that kind of an inspection? That is, review the effluent discharge to ensure that it meets standards? Is it one time and, and that you'll never see them again, or is the standard that they will do it once a week, once a month? The DEP is stretched kind of thin. They have, uh, Bill Johnson is in charge of the OBD, and he does a pretty good job. Um, 
But he, he's only, with me, he only has to see me once a year because he knows that my system runs the way it's supposed to run. Um, there's a uh, septic preservation is a licensed contractor that you know will oversee it two or three times a year. Um, but in in essence, I'm actually the 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 one who operates it on a daily basis because I check it every day. Mm -hmm. I make sure that the chlorine tablets are filled, the dechlorination tablets are filled, and I make sure it's operating. Uh, you know, whether it's a, a belt, uh, and there's, uh, you, you know, you, you, you have to make sure your grease traps are clean too as well. And, you know, and, and I, 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 I very rarely had a violation with a DEP. Um, and because, you know, I do keep my grease traps clean. Uh, there's only one grease trap. But, you know, it, if you don't pump it, it's, you know, you have to make sure it's uh, maintained. Um, some, some people do them, you know, once a year or twice a year. I do mine once a month. <clears throat> Brian, is there any town obligation with respect to review or inspections of this facility, or is it entirely left to the state and the DEP? Yeah, it's, it doesn't fall within our authority as, an, as a licensed overboard discharge to inspect it. Frankly, I know nothing about overboard discharges. I have no idea how they're operated. Mm -hmm. um, I have had no training in that area. So, yeah, we really are, are not equipped to, you know, be that inspection uh, entity. I remember there was, there was some comments uh, in some of the materials about having the town <clears throat> impose some kind of a condition like that, that the town would inspect. And I didn't think you had the capability, but I wasn't uh, sure. Yeah, I think the condition that you're referring to wasn't that we inspect, but that an inspection by a third party firm, such as, as the one that that, um, that Mr. DeSanto has contracted with, somebody who's has expertise in those systems and in the testing of the water quality, which could be any testing lab, frankly. Mm -hmm. They could come and check, the, you know, take take samples of the of the discharge water and test it for E. coli or bacteria or any of those things. I think that was what the condition was. It wasn't specifically that the town inspect it. It was that it be inspected and those reports be submitted to the town <coughs> for their review. Do you have any questions? Well, I have a question about this report and I don't know if this is the time to ask it or if we should wait until after. It's probably as good a time as any. We have um, the applicant in front okay. of us. Well, I was wondering yeah. if you should just get through the... Or do you want to do that? Through, yeah, just get through the... So everything's in the record. And then you okay. All right. That, that sounds fine. That okay. All right. <clears throat> um, the second criteria that has to be met uh, is that the proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to existing and foreseeable traffic in the vicinity. Could you comment on how your operations will impact traffic? Um, we're not we're not adding any any more parking spaces, so I don't think that's going to be an issue. Uh, uh, it, it, does that pertain to uh, if a, we were adding or an expansion? No, it's just your existing facility. Oh no, it's it's standard. You know, you know forty parking spots. I mean. The, okay and the, the way it's been for 40 years. <clears throat> the third criteria is that the proposed use will not create public safety problems, which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood, or require a substantially greater degree in municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. I'm just reading my answers. Up there you there. go. That I, way, I, now we're on the I'm, same page. I don't have my glasses on, but uh, <coughs> um, again, um, there's there's plenty of room for fire, rescue, uh, police, and uh, and I, I don't think it would interfere with the, any of the neighborhood properties as well. Uh, they're far enough away anyway. Okay. And they're all friends of mine. <laughs> <clears throat> the fourth criteria is that the proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion 
or have an adverse effect on water supplies. Oh, thank you. <laughs> How's that? That's even better. <laughs> oh, old age. And feel free to read it. It's we, we just need to get it into the record. That's, oh, yeah. That's all. Yeah, water supply by the Portland Water District. I remember right now. at the end of Milliken Road, it will not have an adverse on water supply and parking a lot is completely paved uh, with no soil or gravel exposed <clears throat> that would result in any erosion. Okay. The fifth criteria is that the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. Well, the property is far enough away uh, from neighborhood structures to have any impact. Uh, it has been used as a restaurant for 70 years. <clears throat> the next criteria <clears throat> is if located in the Shoreland zone, as depicted by the town maps, the proposed use will comply with all requirements of the town of Scarborough zoning, um, Shoreland zoning ordinance. The property will comply with all of the requirements of the town of Scarborough Shoreland zoning ordinance and will have adequate flood insurance. Okay. <clears throat> the next one is the applicant has sufficient right title or interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. I have a three year lease with an option to buy and uh, I attached it to the application. Okay. okay. <clears throat> the next one is the applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to subsection five of this section. I have the technical and financial ability to meet the standards and comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals as applicant uh, was the previous owner of the property for 40 years, from 1979 to uh, 2009. Hmm. <clears throat> and the last one is the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and hours of operation. Uh, the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood as no noise will be created as hours of operation are 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. with no live music inside or outside of the premises. <clears throat> Those are the criteria. Does anybody have any questions or concerns or comments? Kyle? Oh, well, yeah, Michelle, you were going to hit you. Uh, yeah, so looking at this um, uh, report that Bill Johnson did, um, I see that the alarm systems, it says it's not working at the pump station. Is that something that you plan to address uh, before? Yeah, he, he didn't address it as a, a real major concern, uh, but I, I, he pointed it out. I didn't, I didn't know that it wasn't working. It's, it's, a, it's the final discharge pipe that pumps to Phillips Brooks. And the, the pump station is, station is working properly. It's just if, if, if it, the water level gets to a certain point and the pump's not kicking on, an alarm will go off. So I need to have that repaired. And I'm ready to do that. I was just informed of it two days ago, but I will get that taken care of. Okay. Um, also on here, the cover over the discharge pump station must be replaced? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I painted it, but you know, he wants it replaced by the end of 2025, if you read the notes. Yeah, it should a, be a replaced before too long. Yeah, I'll have it done, I'll have it done way before that. <laughs> uh, just wanted to make sure that was something that you were planning on doing. Um, I think that was all that I wanted to address with that. Okay. Kyle? Kyle? I, I had a few questions as well. Um, you, you mentioned you have a licensed contractor to service the, the, the OBD system. Right. Is that septic preservation services? Yes. Well, under that contract, what does that service involve? They're basically uh, doing my job that I do on a daily basis. They just tell me that the system's operating properly. 
Um, it's technically I, I could do their job. So, but they, I guess it's one of the license requirements from the DEP that you have a, a, a contract in place. So we actually have two contractors, me and them. Um, and what's the term of that contract? Is that one year? It's a yearly basis, okay. year to year. And we just renewed it, so. Okay, do they perform any kind of water quality testing? Um, I believe they do. Um, but they, I, I think there's more is a structural integrity uh, okay. to how the system looks and runs. I mean, is the pump working? Is the blower motor working? Is the fan belt on? Is you know, um, is effluent you know being discharged properly? And is, is the system running and circulating? Um, I, I, I'm not. I really don't think they do much more than that. Uh, but it's a condition that the DEP wants. Um, Bill Johnson did his uh, study, um, but I, I, I could be corrected in that though. They, they may, you know, do a test, you know, a, twice a year, I guess. Um, you mentioned that um, there's a grease trap that you clean right. once a month. Yes. Is that cleaning, is that something that um, Septic Preservation Services? No, no. That, that's my responsibility. Okay. Um, during the floods we had in December and in March, did the OBD system continue to operate? Uh, no, it didn't because they were closed. Okay. Yeah, uh, that was out of service for over a year. It's one of the reasons I'm here because the ordinance changed or the variance changed. If, if there or when there is another flood event, do you have any sense of how the OBD system would handle? That? Well, I, I, we we talked about this at the last meeting. Uh, the, the, they they seem to think that the flood waters were going to reach the uh, OBD system, which is way up in back of the land, and it doesn't even come close to that. I've seen floods there for forty. Well, I've seen floods, but not you know, through two or three, but the water doesn't come close to that. So um, in any, you know, situation like that, we would just shut it off. You know, we wouldn't want it, um, you know, operating in a flood because it had, would have no way to pump because the, that final pump station on the end uh, that pumps out to Phillips Brook would be flooded. And it, you know, it's five, it gets about three or four feet above that, uh, but it doesn't come up into the building because my building and the, uh, the parking lot slopes up to the front door. Okay. So it's not a flood, you know, I mean, you hear the word flood and you think, wow, we, you know, the water's coming over Route 1 and John's is underwater. That's not the case. It's, it takes a lot. It has to be a high tide, full moon, eye of the storm, heavy, tor heavy torrential rain for 48 hours. Um, all those conditions need to be met to get a real flood. Um, so, you know, we, uh, you know, and it w it's not the type of flood that would wash away Ann John's building uh, or have any impact on the um, sewage treatment plant, uh, the OBD. That was all I had for questions. <clears throat> Anybody else? Yeah. Um, so this question, I guess I'm, I'm going to direct it, uh, Brian, uh, just a, a question. I, looking at some of the correspondence we had uh, from the town um, with regard to this, uh, this matter, we had one uh, request from the town from the planning board with respect to weekly monitoring. We had a letter that goes back, that was from, looks like mid-July. Mid uh, <clears throat> another one going back to June from Tom Hall, the town manager, to the overboard discharge program, uh, Irene uh, Summer, in their licensing department, requesting monthly testing. And 
so there's some conflict there, and, and maybe they revised between early June and mid-July when they had the planning board meeting and decided that they were monthly wasn't enough and now we need it weekly. Um, I'm just wondering, uh, does the town have a, uh, the ability to override a DEP permitting licensing process that spells out that they need a, 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 you know, a third party to come in and inspect on a certain frequency. Uh, I, I mean, is this sort of in scope for us with this matter, or is this matter, hey, it's a DEP thing, they need to follow the DEP's rules and, and, and we stay out of that? It's both. It would be both. They have to adhere to the license conditions, or their license could could be invalidated. That's number one priority for I would think for for this operation to comply with their state license, because without the state license, they can't be in business. The second priority would be to uh, follow with follow through with any conditions that this board or the planning board has suggested, and it's up to you guys. This is, this is what the planning board has suggested. There's also a memo that I put on the screen from the Conservation Commission, yes. which I think you guys also received. So a lot of the reason there's so many different opinions out there is everybody has their take on it, right? But you guys are the ones with the decision to either approve or not approve or approve with conditions, and those conditions are set by you. Um, and so that's part of your deliberation. And, and I'm not going to, nor should I, weigh in on what those conditions should be. You have the information in front of you, and a healthy discussion amongst the board members should help you arrive at a reasonable um, condition. And certainly asking questions of the applicant, um, you know, <coughs> about this. I, I, I do know, and I should, should share with you that we did, uh, uh, Bill Johnson did respond to the planning board's conditions, I, unfortunately, I forgot to put that in your packet, but he, he just offered a little more in-depth analysis about what they were requesting. And I think one of the comments that he made, and you probably had a discussion with, with Bill about this, I think his comment was he's never seen any uh, fog in, in the system, the, the food oil grease, fats oil, oil grease. He's never noticed that as being a problem what they test for is more the BODs, the, the bio, I can't even remember what BOD stands for, but it's more the E. coli, the bacteria type stuff. Um, does that make sense? Exactly, the BOD is the bacteria. Um, so, TSS is suspended solids, uh, you know, the flock, the effluent. Um, yeah, uh, again, uh, you know, I, as long as I've known Bill and as long as I've been running this plant, I keep it clean, and that's, you know, Bill says, you could do my job, and I'm like, well, it doesn't pay enough, but uh, <laughs> I, uh, you, if you keep your grease trap clean, if you keep, you know, you have a good grease separator system, which I do, um, you, you're not going to get those issues. We used to be open lunch seven days a week, lunch and dinner, but we're only open for dinner now, so we're going to have half that volume, and you know, minimal grease, and little to no fried seafood at all. Actually, uh, none. Uh, we're not doing fried seafood. We kind of strictly Italian now, and um, smaller menu. Um, uh, our hours are going to be less, so, you know, less grease. Uh, but grease was never an issue w with with our system, um, at least when I ran it. I. I've had a leave of absence for four years, but I'm back and kind of like a new sheriff in town, if you will. And uh, I, as you can see, I've made uh, major improvements and uh, upgrades to the system um, where it's operating at a level that Bill Johnson's comfortable with, I'm comfortable with, and hopefully uh, you guys will be comfortable with. Um, I take it very seriously. Um, this is what I do. For a living, I mean, it's kind of like my baby. I, I take care of it. It's, uh, and, and, and when I was gone, I used to drive by and check on it. You know, the past four years, I see. I wonder how he's doing with that. 
Um, obviously not very good, but um, yeah, I can assure everyone that uh, um, there's, uh, and, and I think the other issue was that, you know, the grease testing would be a burden on, to have a third party come in and test that on a weekly basis. I mean, that would be a insanity. I mean, it would be too much money. Um, uh, I don't know, um, you know, when, when a system runs right and, and Bill, when he did his inspection a couple days ago, he says he's never seen it look better. And uh, uh, well, well, better than it did. Uh, um, so, you know, I, I, I don't see the necessity there to, you know, do that type of testing. I, if it was somebody that was green and didn't know what they were doing and didn't know how to service the plant and uh, how to uh, keep it clean and keep it run, operating on a level that it should, uh, then, yeah, I mean, impose testing on that guy, but not me. <laughs> you had a question? Mm -hmm. <coughs> so are you aware oh. of the potential for, the, for Route 1 to be re-engineered? Yeah, that's like three years away or something like that. Yes. So what will your plans be for that? Won't you be below the road then or? Not sure. We'll address that when it when it happens, but or if it happens, but it's three years away. I've got a three year lease and I, I want to do business now, but um I don't know. I mean that's a something that's not of a concern to me right now. Okay. <clears throat> Joe? Just a, a couple of follow-up questions on, on the earlier topic. Can you speak to, um, you, you've mentioned now a couple of times the work you've done on the system um, to get it up and running and, and working better than it has in the past. Can you speak to those investments that you've made, the changes, the upgrades? And while you're doing that, um, can, you, can you talk to, I assume these systems are sort of sized for particular water flow, gallons, gallons per day, per day, that type of thing, and any information that you have on, you know, estimates, given your planned hours of operation, how much effluent will you create, how much versus what the system is capable of handling? But, well, the system will handle 8,000 gallons a day, and we're licensed for 1,400 gallons a day, so I think it can handle that. Um, yeah, and and as I stated before, we're not open for lunch anymore, so we're going to use probably, you know, a third or or so less water. Um, but the system can certainly handle whatever we're going to throw at it. It's actually, you know, big, but I think that's one of the smallest ones they make. So, and it's good because, you know, if you do hit the 1,400 mark per gallons per day, it's it's going to it's going to work well. Um, the upgrades, uh, as you, well, I can, we, we did a lot, a lot of excavating and uh, we had some broken pipes, uh, lasted 30 years. These are diversion valves that, that if, the, if the system ever malfunctions, there's a, there are two diversion valves that'll pump it into a 3,000 gallon holding tank. Um, so we had those repaired. We had um, a new motor put in, new electric motor, uh, I knew the blower motor was fine. I uh, new belt and I uh, changed the oil in it. Um, I had some structural, uh, excuse me, uh, structural uh, cement work done to the top of it. New chlorine feeder tubes and dechlorinated feeder tubes. Um, and uh, I pressure washed the entire system, um, and I. And I Gave it, gave it a new coat of paint. It's sort of the aqua original color, more aesthetic to the neighborhood, I thought. And uh, just one other follow-up question. You talked about the di diversion diverter. Yeah, these the three thousand yeah. gallon. Tank. You have to have those in. We never. My system never malfunctioned in the thirty years that I was there. But they're diversion shutoff valves. If the system's not working, you sh you you uh, divert the water into a holding tank. It's a manual diversion. Yeah. Okay, thank you. 
<clears throat> and Mr. DeSender, you mentioned the issue about paying for inspections. Your current contract with a third party, that calls for two inspections a year? I'm trying to remember what you said earlier. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's two inspections. Do you know about how much money it would cost you to do, let's say, monthly inspections with the same company? Well, Ballpark. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a thousand bucks for those guys to come twice a year. So to have them come, you know, two times it must be 500 bucks, it would probably be another 500 bucks a month. Okay. And the same would be true for weekly? If they would, we just do that multiplication? I, you know? I would probably say you're right, you know, on, a, on a weekly basis to have that thing monitored like that. They don't just get in their truck and drive down. I think their, uh, their office is in Biddeford. Uh, they have a satellite office there, but I think they operate out of um, New Hampshire or, or Massachusetts, I'm not sure. <clears throat> so if we were to impose a weekly requirement, you know, we're talking about on the order of maybe $50,000 a year. If we imposed a monthly requirement, it would be about yeah, 50, uh, Yeah, if they, you know, want to test that um, every, every week. Is that what you said? Yes. Yeah. yeah, you'd be talking a lot of money, yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to put sort of parameters around what a lot is. So sure. that those are about the, the numbers that your third party would charge you, give or take. I mean, it doesn't have to be exact. I'm just yeah, I, I would say you're, you're close, give or take, you know, 10% margin of error. Okay. <clears throat> the other question I had is, if the system were to fail, what would failure mean? In, um, in this kind of a system, would it mean that in one inspection you fail to meet a criteria, or would it be catastrophic failure? What would a system? It would have to be catastrophic because I've been there for forty years and it's never failed. So it would have to be an act of God or a, I don't know, some type of uh, earthquake maybe to crack it in half. And if it, if it, <clears throat> I mean, if it were to fail, would your license requirement? Would the DEP require that it be replaced with a new system? If it was destroyed and non-repairable, yes. But otherwise, you would have the opportunity to repair it if there was something that was wrong exactly. otherwise. Exactly. I have a question. The Conservation yes. Committee, um, was it them that they? Uh, Someone has um, has asked that you, if it fails, has this catastrophic fail that we're talking about, that within three years of us granting this today, um, that you replace it completely. Is that something that you would be prepared to yes, do? Yes, and I agreed case? on that at the, on the last meeting. Okay. I think maybe that. Which makes sense if it, you know, if an earthquake not destroys it, it's going to have to be replaced, but hopefully that won't happen. Uh, <laughs> committee was at the S. It's a plan. Was part of the plan. Oh, it was part of the planning. planning. Okay. Yeah. It's I here on the planning board. board is advisory <clears throat> opinion um, number three, commit to full system replacement if the overboard discharge system fails within three years. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, there's so many people weighing in on this. <laughs> so? A question about the grease trap. Where is, the, where is that grease trap located? Grease trap's located. I, I have another diagram. I, I'm glad you asked that. I had one burping number last week. So this is the restaurant. This is Route 1. This is Millican Road. This is a complete diagram John, of the system. Can I stop you? Is there a remote mic? There that you can grab. Yeah. 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 So the grease trap is well, that, that keeps falling off. So it's, it's all good. <clears throat> John, would it be easier to use a remote mic? Because no, this uh, we've got one just behind. Yeah, he's right there. He's got one there for you. Okay. Hello. Hello. Okay. So. This is the restaurant. This is Route 1, southbound. Um, this is Milligan Road, the front door. Um, this is the grease trap right here. And this is the new grease filter uh, 
separator. We won't allow any grease to get into the system, and I have it. This is it right here. And this is a 2,000 gallon grease trap that I have pumped on a monthly basis. And, and can you speak to, just as we did about the treatment plant, what is the capacity of the grease trap relative to the, in, given your 30 or 40 years experience, how much grease do you produce every day? And you said you clean it every day, correct? I, I, do, I don't have to clean it every day. There's, oh, you, maybe it was monthly. Yeah, monthly. yeah. Well, there's no, yeah, monthly. I'll have it pumped, but no grease gets through this, this filter that's here. It allows it to get into the system. Okay. In, in that, that grease trap, essentially, it's similar, the same as what, what was there when you were previously running? Correct. It's the same uh, grease trap, okay. but with a new uh, separator that will not allow any grease to get in. Okay. And w with the old grease trap, did you ever have an issue? No, we didn't. But when I got back <laughs> after four years, uh, I did have a, a different filter system, uh, but it was missing. I don't know what happened to it, so I installed a new one. Is, is that grease trap, sorry for all the questions, but is that grease trap any different than a grease trap that would be in any other restaurant? Uh, yes, it is, because most restaurants just have this, and they'll pump it, and they'll let their... Any uh, over any uh, ex excess grease just go through. I don't allow that to happen because I have this. This is uh, probably the best investment for my particular use. Okay, thank you. I don't have any questions, but I do want to comment on. I don't know that it's necessary for weekly testing, if we're going to get into the, the discussion of how. We can do that when, during the discussion. During part. it, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, well, maybe I do have another question. <coughs> if you were to retire or no longer be maintaining that for whatever reason, what is your plan? Um, do you have a plan for having somebody take over? Um, or do you have plans to only operate this for, you know, restaurant for three years and then retire. I, you seem very. I'm never letting go. <laughs> <laughs> you seem very knowledgeable about the system. My biggest concern is that well, whoever takes this over is not going to. Sure, you know, un system. very understandable. Um, I don't know if you, you folks know who I am, but uh, I'm going to die there, figuratively speaking. It's, it's. It's where I want to be. It's um, it's my passion in life to do what I do there. Um, so my plans is my plans are to be there for a long time. So I, don't, I hopefully I answered your question, but uh, that's that's the long and the short of it. Just when we do go to discussion, we may need to put in something. If he doesn't die, a if, condition. If, <laughs> in, the, in the case that he is no longer maintaining that, they need to revisit with us, sure. whoever okay. takes it over. Okay. <clears throat> John, one quick question. <clears throat> I noticed on the lease that you have, the entity that's going to, is the, the lessee, the entity is S-A-W-S-E-A-L-L-C. Yes. But the applicant before us is a different entity. It's you. Are, is that a technical issue? Um, is that something that, because we, ultimately we have to issue the permit. Right. We have to issue the permit, I presume, to the entity that op occupies the property. Um, because that's, because I mean, they're the ones who are going to be responsible for this. Correct. Uh, um, I would say, you know, uh, I am a saucy LLC, but uh, you know, I, and I am the applicant. So is it saucy, or maybe I filled it out wrong, or no? I, 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 the, is the paperwork incorrect? It's paperwork, that's fine. I just wanted to make sure that when we do the, when we give our give you the final permit, if we give if we issue one, that it's made out to the right entity. Right. It, well, saucy is the lease is is, uh, I guess the. Uh, 
who, uh, I signed the lease, but as, I guess, Saucy LLC. So I, I, I think you have a point there. So you, you may want to consider that to, um, I, I, would, I would think that if you approve it to, you know, grant it to Saucy or uh, maybe Brian knows more about that than me, but uh, would it be my name on the certificate of occupancy or Saucy LLC? I have a question. Is, is, is Saucy the LLC? Is it your LLC? Yes. You're the principal of the LLC? I am, 100% owner. There you go. Yeah, um, so all we have for information is John J. DeSanto, so if, if you want the approval to list uh, whatever your LLC is uh, in, care, in care of John J. DeSanto, that's probably how we would issue it. Oh, okay, well. <laughs> but, but to the point, um, any special exception or, or any extension or resumption of a, of a uh, non-conforming use, as long as that use is not discontinued, it doesn't necessarily, unless you specifically call it out, it's going to run with the property. Right. So John could sell this restaurant operation as he did before to someone else. So you have to keep that in mind. So the conditions that you impose are not just his conditions. Mm -hmm. The conditions you impose could run to someone else. <laughs> I think it's a valid question. John, John, John has skirted the issue as, as I would probably as well. <laughs> In three years, if the road is raised and so on and so forth, it may effectively discontinue the use of the property, quite frankly. I don't know how that would, would ever work. But again, I never say never, and sure. that's not my, my call. I don't have a crystal ball, and hopefully I won't be here then anyway. So, <laughs> so um, just keep it in mind, though, that, that the use can continue. It, it's not just him. Sure. It's the use that you're approving. His name is his name is on the application, but and the only thing that changes should he sell it while it's operating and it doesn't stop, the only thing that changes is the new owner would have to do a certificate of occupancy for his new contact information mm -hmm. and so on. So we have a we have a current owner or operator. But yeah, the the thing will run with the land. It's not it's not running with his company. No, but the applicant has to have right title and interest in the land. Correct, which, and, which he's he provided has a through lease. The, exactly. Through Swansea or C but, Swan, yeah. But yeah, so so any anybody that buys the operation from him is going to have that same right title yes. and interest unless the owner discontinues the lease for some reason. So uh, yeah, I, I, I just want to want that to be understood. And, and there, there may or may not be a, a high comfort level with John operating the system, but as has been displayed the last four years, it wasn't operated correctly because the person didn't understand how to do it. So that could happen again. Mm -hmm. DEP, you know, take into, take into account that that was probably through the COVID situation. DEP was understaffed and why, you know, why it was continued, why it was left to continue to run in that, that state, I think, is what's <clears throat> spawned all of these concerns and these memos and, and comments from people is that they're looking for some assurance that that doesn't happen again. And, and that's why <laughs> the conditions are there. And I'll just say one more thing, you know, for you folks to, to consider as you deliberate. Um, John's, I, I don't know the cost of testing, but I suspect that simply taking a sample and have it tested for, for BODs and, and bacterial content and so on and so forth, it's probably not going to be $1,000 a test if the sample can be taken locally, right, by a local person. Maybe it's John with a sampling kit, and then it goes to Katahdin Labs or somebody local. So I don't think it's going to be that exorbitant. I've taken samples of effluent from failing septic systems and had it tested for free at the, at the uh, sanitary district for E. coli and bacteria. So I, I think really that's, that's the type of stuff they're looking for. And if he maintains his grease trap system, 
you won't see the the uh, the oil and grease stuff become an issue. And that was basically what Bill Johnson was saying. That's that's probably not the thing that we should be so concerned about. It's the other the other stuff. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I'll I'll just leave you with that. And as you deliberate and consider all of the various memos and comments and suggestions, again, I, it's, it's up to you guys. Um, I think there's some middle ground there for sure. sure. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other questions of Mr. DeSanto? <clears throat> Thank you very much. We appreciate You're welcome. You, your Thank time you. on this one. Uh, at this point, what I would like to do is open the meeting to anybody who has any comments to make um, on the applicant and the application before us. Okay. <clears throat> and Brian, we, you've given us information that you've received separately by email from folks in the community. Uh, and I think we have all of that. I don't know whether it's necessary to read that into the record or how would you like to proceed with that? And we it's, have them. It's really up to you. Yeah. Um, I can summarize uh, if you want. Why or, don't you summarize? I think that would be a, yeah. appropriate. Um, yeah, I'm happy to. Um, so we did have written comments from Susan Hamill, um, who was writing to ask us to deny, or ask you, not me, to okay. deny the appeal from Ann John's restaurant. Um, that it's one of two remaining overboard discharge permits in Scarborough. I on, honestly don't know what the other one is, so I'm not sure where, where her information is coming from there. Um, uh, she mentions that, in addition, we know that the prior business failed to maintain the OBD system, um, yet that business stayed open with no consequence. And that's kind of what I was just alluding to. Yep. Um, and she uh, mentions the, the active and valuable shellfish industry and how this, this could impact that. And so she's asking for the board to please deny that appeal. Um, she did also mention something in here. Um, uh, she's, she mentioned that the OBD system is no longer grandfathered. That is not factual. Um, it, it is grandfathered and we, I provided the board with uh, the licensing uh, uh, department's comment on that. Yes, so, yeah, that was in our um, I just want to be clear on that. And then we had the memo from um, the Conservation Commission, which was in your packet, which was very similar to the Planning Board's um, um, advisory opinion in that um, they, they, they said to, you know, they, they had three prioritized things in, in order of... Uh, uh, listed in order of preference on the first one was to discontinue the use of the OBD system and connect to municipal sewer. That's almost impossible because municipal sewer will never extend extend to that point, um, at least not, not in our lifetime probably, um, mainly because there's no customers other than hand johns between the two points. Um, and then fully replace the OBD system, which again was a condition that the planning board placed on it, and then to continue the use of the existing system, but implement a weekly sampling and reporting, which weekly may be, again, it's up for debate. It may be a little, a little aggressive. Okay. And that's basically all I had for, for public comment. Okay. <clears throat> this gentleman, would you like to say? Could you please um, introduce yourself and talk to us? King Weinstein, 96 East Grand Ave, Scarborough. Uh, representative of BLT funding, the building owner. I was just going to address the concern about uh, DOT raising Route 1. Uh, they had a meeting, I think it was last summer, the summer before, we've had a couple of meetings with DOT. As John said, they're like at least three years out to figure out what they're going to do. And we've had specific conversations with Brian and over with uh, DOT also. The per they may want to purchase it at some point, but they don't have the funding at this point. They may. Uh, whatever they do in the future, they can't flood the property. They have to still main have it maintained like anybody's house. They can't raise the highway. They'd have to either purchase the property by eminent domain or by negotiating, whatever. The one thing they talked about is changing the entrance to the rear. But um, in my lifetime, I do remember Route 1, I think, has been raised at least twice, uh, once maybe 10 years ago, and it 
pretty much back where it is again. And I asked that question to them, and they had a theory that they're going to use a different type of uh, membrane or material underneath, so hopefully it wouldn't be back where it was again. But uh, that's kind of a future condition. So. Okay. Any questions? The other thing on, uh, I was familiar with septic preservation. I think they were inspecting quarterly. And uh, I think that's what they were going to do. We had asked them, you know, can you do it monthly, make sure there's no problem? And their answer was there was no need to. It's like saying you have a traffic light, you know, can you inspect the traffic light monthly? I said, no, there's, there's really not much that can go wrong. <clears throat> oh, he does a great job doing it. I think there's, in fact, only one moving part. Is that right, the motor, John? Yeah, so there's not a lot going on. It's mainly maintaining the... Uh, Chlorine and dechlorine before it goes in and out, so, which it does very well. Sure. One follow-up question. I'm not pick and choose who, who answers. It doesn't matter. Um, I'm just wondering, if this system were to stop working, how would you know? Well, the first way, I, think you'd, I, I don't think that's ever not happened, but if it ever goes out power, the pumps don't pump anything out. It just stops, and you'd smell effluent, and there's an alarm. So it's basically a float switch. Mm -hmm. So if the water starts rising inside the chamber, that float will go up, and it mm -hmm. kicks off an alarm of going okay. off. So, but pretty much they would close you, kind of know right away. Th this is the alarm we spoke about earlier that you've committed to repairing. Okay, yeah. so if, if this... If the one moving part, the pump, stops working, then um, it would fill up, the alarm goes off, you know you have a problem. Well, it, all, it would back up inside. The, it would back, uh, would, uh, in, yeah, in, so that, I guess that's part of my question. So he'd have to close, I mean, they'd know right away. Toilets it it would back up into toilets. your grease trap and back up into the restaurant. So you'd have a mess on your hands. Toilets wouldn't flush. Is, isn't there a backflow preventer in there? Yeah. Excuse me, John, you're going to have to go up no. to the mic for that. Thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> thought I was all done up here. <laughs> um, yeah, um, I'm, I'm there every day. You can hear it run. Um, there's technically a, a blower motor which aerates the system, which causes good uh, effluent quality. Um, so, and there's a belt. There's a, there's a, so I guess you could say three moving parts, but um, I look at that thing every day. I hear it every day. I, you know, it's one of those things that, um, and there, there is an alarm pump system. I, I don't know if it's necessarily going to back up into my uh, thing. You can probably see it uh, uh, or uh, smell it, you know. I mean, you know, I, I don't, there's, there's not, uh, my system never gets to a point where it's producing poor quality effluent. Um, you know, and, and if it did go for one or two days, I'd know about it within 24 hours, just without an alarm system going off because I check it every day. So um, I, I, your concern, I think, is, I, th I think the, uh, you know, the I'm gonna fix the, uh, the, uh, the pump uh, alarm system that, in the final chamber, uh, it's not an issue right now because it's not, you know, it's working properly, but it, it will be need, need to be addressed, and it's, it's fairly simple. It's uh, just a new part, um, and it's got a red light on it, too, so you know, the alarm will go off and the red light will go off. Right now, when, the, when you tip it up, there's no alarm and no red light, so um, that'll be fixed. Um, probably within a week. I already have my electrician looking at the part. Do you mind if I jump in with another question? Sorry sure. to put you on the hot seat again, Mr. DeSanto. Do, when DEP visited in July and August, was the restaurant operational? No. What, so what were they? What were oh, they? No, wait a minute. No. Uh, okay, excuse me. Uh, the, the first month it wasn't, but we've, you know, we cleaned the system and we've got water in it now. I mean, it's just from, you know, the cleaning the restaurant and water flows. I have, um, I put fresh water in it because I wanted it to get activated again. Because, you know, we're, we're, we're tentatively opening 
conditional upon what's going on here tonight in two weeks. So um, the system needed to have water in it to, you know, to work properly. So um, in the water, uh, there was some good effluent sludge. It's called activated sludge that uh, was in the system, but I had to let it run for, you know, almost two or three days. And it finally, it clears itself up and it works on aeration and flow, you know, a 24 hour period or 48 hour period. But it's back to a quality now that um, that's producing clear effluent. Um, you know, rainwater, whatever, it's going to fill up, you know, eventually, but um, it, it is producing clear uh, water now. But it wasn't running. I mean, the restaurant was not running, and it'll, it'll even work better now that it has, for lack of a better word, you know, uh, you know, people using the toilets more often. So, you know, customers or, you know, staff or whatever, because that, that, that's basically how it operates. It operates on that. All right, thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> Joe, did you have any follow-up before we can? Okay. Are you, going, are you guys all set? Okay. Thank you very much. <clears throat> okay, with that, I think it's time to close the public hearing, and we can discuss the <clears throat> application among ourselves. Anybody want to start off? Sure. Go, ahead. Go for it, Chris. How do we prevent what happened last time? I mean, how did they fail, but they didn't have to close? How, how do we prevent uh, what happened with the previous owner? Yeah, I, I think the, the answer to that is just a, a, a testing condition of some kind. So I... I but how, did, how did anybody know it had failed if it wasn't tested? Well, I think it... It sounds from the DEP reports like the previous operator was not running it properly. And my understanding from the record that we have is it just wasn't, there was no regular testing of the effluent. You know, there was like a, maybe an annual DEP inspection, but there wasn't really, you know, much else going on. But didn't so, it fail? I think, I think in the, the record before us, there's, it's not exactly clear, but, but I think it's, I think it's safe to say that there were discharges that exceeded the DEP permit requirements. So I think, you know, I, looking at, the, at our criteria, I think this is obviously the only real issue here is whether the proposed use will create unsanitary or unhealthful conditions by reason of sewage disposal or emissions to the air or water. Um, you know, I think we could find this condition is met solely by compliance with the DEP permit. But we're not obligated to, and I think we can find that that condition requires more. Uh, my, um, I'm, I'm hijacking um, your conversation, your comment here, Christine, but I guess my instinct is, based on the record, to require some kind of regular, perhaps monthly or quarterly, um, testing for bacteria and for fog um, as the planning board has um, recommended that we do. I, I think weekly is probably, I think weekly is excessive. I think that, a, that monthly or quarterly would be more appropriate. I was even going to say quarterly or semi-annual. And if they fail, then they have to go down to monthly or every three months. I don't know how you guys feel about that. So he's demonstrated to me that he knows the system and he can operate it properly. I think monthly is maybe even a little excessive, but I don't know. My, I just... Uh, my concern is was with a successor operator. So that was the other part that I was going to add. I would like to add that if anybody other than Mr. DeSanto is in operation of this restaurant that they need to demonstrate that they can present adequate and appropriate maintenance of this system. Well, can we do, 
I, I don't I, know if we can yeah, do that, but. I, I worry that these conditions that require the town to, you know, something years from now triggers the town to, to do something are hard to enforce. My That's a good point. My, my inclination is just to say qu quarterly or monthly testing just as a condition, full stop. What about if it was quarterly and if they fail, go down to monthly for like two quarters until, or is that like two? Is that, is that getting too into the weeds? Yeah, no, I, no. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, don't know. I just, because also if this becomes so much of a burden to do this, maybe it's free, maybe it's $1,000. We don't really know how much this is going to cost. It, that would be nice to know. Um, you know, at some point he may deem that then the business is viable, which isn't really our problem, but it is nice for the town to have another, you know, restaurant, um, and business operating and having that space be occupied again. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't I, know if this is something that would be a burden on him enough. And we didn't discuss that, um, that, you know, that would keep him from continuing on with opening or operating. Yeah, I, I agree. And I am, I am concerned about the burden on the business, but I do think that, you know, our, our job here is to determine whether the use will create unsanitary or unhe unhealthful conditions by reason of sewage disposal. And I think that this is, this criteria is targeted at exactly this kind of situation where there is a risk of contamination in the marsh. There has been marsh contamination in the past from this exact facility. So, you know, that plus the planning board has recommended um, that we impose a condition. So I, I'm, I'm inclined to, um, to support some kind of, um, you know, quarterly or other um, testing condition with our, um, as a condition of issuing, granting this appeal. Hmm. Joe, do you have any comments? Uh, just a, a, a question, I, uh, Kyle, the reference to uh, the failure of the system and then beyond that, that there was a discharge of some sort. I, I don't remember reading about that. And, and it may just be that I missed it, you know, we're all running around and, and so was there a, in, an actual discharge me measured that was coming out of the system, or, or was it just that the system was found in the state of disrepair um, because of the, the lack of attention that the prior business owner um, had taken? I, I, I don't recall seeing any documented evidence of previous discharge that exceeded the DEP's limitations. Um, but we didn't ask the DEP for any records that not have been provided to us. All we've got, uh, Mr. Chair, sure. is, is we've got these past inspections that were taken or that were done when Mr. DeSanto wasn't operating the restaurant, and I've, I've just brought them up. So the first one that they sent us, this was sent to us by by DEP, was one that was taken in 7 uh, 21 2020. Okay. Okay. And you can see here in the rating system, you know, there's, there's satisfactory, marginal, marginal, unsatisfactory, and not applicable. So there were some unsatisfactories. There were some satisfactories <coughs> of these various items. I don't think we have any information. I haven't seen any information on any discharge um, issue. Uh, okay. Sorry, can I interject on that? I, could you be thinking of the town managers? letter to us that yeah. said that the dis there was discharge um, directly to, into Scarborough March, Marsh from Phillips Brook, and they're basically alluding to the fact that it was this property's fault, and it may or may not be. Yeah. Well, I, there, there is, the I mean, there's discharge into the marsh. I mean, that's where the, that's where the effluent has to run eventually, right? Right, Clean. but is it 100% that cause? I, it doesn't say that. I just... I, I, so the town manager indicates in his letter, you know, and we have, we have the DEP, we have the, the reports that had some unsatisfactory elements from, 
from under the prior operator. Um, but the, the town manager indicates, you know, communication with the DEP inspectors indicates there are significant deficiencies in the overboard discharge system that have been ongoing for years. Mm. I, I have, um, I'm not really concerned about the current operator's operation of it, but I think that there's enough of a record here to support um, adding a condition to the issuance of this mm. permit. Yeah, I I mean I agree. I think there needs to be extra additional testing. Yeah, I I I, I think it's a matter of what, how often. I agree. Is I I mean I I agree. I think it's trying to find some balance. Um, I think we've we've had suggestions from the various letters we've received, weekly, quarterly. Um, seems to me quarterly um, would 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 be reasonable um, at this point, especially given, you know, as we look at the investment that's been put into the system to bring it up to code, we've now had, what, uh, two months in a row with inspections, both inspections basically find the same thing. I, I you know, it does cause me a little bit of concern that it, it, the restaurant's not running. Um, but in a past life, I, I worked with a little bit with municipalities on aeration for, for these types of systems. And they definitely run better when they're running. They, they, <laughs> they don't like to be turned on and off or sitting dormant because of the bacteria and et cetera that, that actually do all the digestion. <coughs> um, and, but once they're running stable, they run pretty consistently. So just based on my experience and based on what I've heard, I feel pretty comfortable. I would feel very comfortable with quarterly and I, and I, I would think m monthly, especially weekly, I think would be overkill and a burden on the business. Christine? I'm trying to understand though, what's the consequence if their system fails? They, they get several shots at keep trying it or what's the consequence well, yeah i mean i think if they we lose their license. if we required reporting to the town then well i guess what would i would ask um our ceo here i mean the town what would the town do with that what could it do with that my sense is that the reporting is it's it's monitoring just to make sure the system is is operating the way it should and the the operator mr DeSanto, is going to maintain that system if the reports come back with any kind of a problem it's going to pinpoint where that problem is he's going to rectify that there there is no the only failure is a catastrophic failure, like was mentioned before. The, the thing falls apart due to an earthquake or a meteor falls on it. There's no failure. There's different sections of that report that say maybe this is unsatisfactory. Attention needs to be paid to this. And it needs to be. So, so the, the follow-up is that DEP isn't coming back. I think, though, Bill Johnson will, will say, I saw in one of the reports, Call me as soon as you fixed it. So he apparently intended to come back and check it when it was fixed. So I think there is some monitoring going on by DEP. If they find something that needs to be corrected, that's major, okay? But I mean, failure, there's, there's not even any evidence. And I'm not, I'm not trying to take sides. I'm just saying I see there's no report that says this operation polluted Phillips Brook or polluted the marsh. It says it discharges into the marsh, and so it definitely could have an impact, but there's no evidence to say that it has at any point had an impact, right? It's just that the danger is there. So when you say failure, it's not going to fail because we've already heard if, if the pump stops pumping, the alarm goes off, they shut it down, they stop using water, they get it corrected until, and then they start it up again. It's not, I know what you're trying to say, but it's not, that's not a condition that's going to happen. Well, I guess. A bad operator. Yeah. So, so like, that's, that's what you're, yeah. I think you're yeah. afraid of. Yeah. That, yeah. That's what, that's my concern because yeah. it seems like, and I'm no engineer, but you could fail to add chlorine 
you could fail to add dechlorination agents. You know, I, I don't know enough to know even all the things that could go wrong, but it seems like there are ways that it could be operated such that fog and bacteria could, you know, could get out the out tube in the mm -hmm. Phillips Brook. So um, I guess, I mean, yeah. I, so it, the question another, sounds like how long are, do you feel comfortable with a brook being potentially polluted before it's found? That's the, the amount of time we need yeah. to put in. I mean, maybe that's a little but, bit too much. But you know how are I mean? you going to prove who, who polluted it? There's a lot of people oh, adjacent I agree. to the brook. So. That, that report from the, that letter does not, I mean, it's, it tries to indicate that it was from this business, but it's, yeah. but it doesn't that's say that it is. But the condition could include testing effluent from, yeah. from, the, um, from this facility. Yeah. I was just trying to answer so. Christine's failure question, and I, I just yeah. don't think failure, I mean, define failure. Is it or one un unsatisfactory point on a report? Is that failure when the rest of the system's operating pro I mean, I don't know. What do you, what do you yeah. call failure? I, 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 we've got two kinds of failure, yeah. right? And we have system failure, which is the catastrophic failure, where it's just not working, and then we have, let's call it operational failure. That, where that's the one I was... Doesn't yeah. do something, yeah. and... You know, the capacity is 1,400 gallons a day, right? You know, that's a <clears throat> 1,400 gallons is a, a fair amount of water, but, you know, by, when you look at the size of the brook system and, you know, it's going to dissipate pretty quickly in there, and if it goes on for a couple of days at 1,000 gallons, it's 3,000 gallons of water that, that could be potentially polluting the brook. So it's, it's not like this is you know, like a nuclear plant that's pumping up millions of gallons of, you know, water to be cooled off every day, it's a very small operation. So even if it does have operational failure and it goes on for a few days, it's not going to create long-term problems for the brook and for the entire estuary there, right? It'll, it'll have some impact, but not a lot. Yeah, I'm more concerned with the person not maintaining the system. Yeah, I, I, Christine, I agree. I, I think I think it really comes down <laughs> um, to the person operating it and in, in operating it in good faith. We we could test once a week. The person knows they're showing up. They're going to fill the chlorine and the dechlorinator, and they're going to make sure that the system's running well when they take that sample. Right. So in, so you know. We, we ultimately have to trust that the person that's getting the permit has enough stake in this that they're going to do the right thing. Well, he's getting the permit. We don't know who gets it next. Co correct. And to Kyle's point, it, 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 it opens a bit of a, a challenge for the town, right? How do they police that if, if it changes for somebody else, right? Um, can... can uh I mean, I'm not uncomfortable with quarterly inspection. I'm comfortable with that. Is there some way, however, um, that if an operator is not maintaining the system properly and they keep getting poor report cards, that we could increase it to monthly? I mean, is there some merit-driven way we can work on that? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> there's, from what I gathered from Mr. DeSantos and from the DEP is that there's different levels of testing and from your comments, Brian. I mean, the DEP requires annually or biannually or, you know, or twice a year rather, third-party licensed folks to come in and do the testing. Right? And that gets you one set of results and perhaps that's what triggers the continuation of your permit is the quality of those tests or the results of those tests. But then we also have Brian testing, you know, where you check the effluent, you go down and you, you, know, you get it tested, you don't have a third party, it's not gonna meet the DEP criteria in the permit, but it's gonna give us the same information. Right? And that probably is a lot less expensive than having the, the third party tester come in and do it. I don't know how much it would cost and I don't know who does that testing, but 
as Brian indicated, he's taken samples and had them tested, and it's free. We're, we can't count on it being free, but you know, what's a lab going to charge? A hundred bucks, two hundred dollars? If it's every quarter, that's not that big a an obligation. Was there, Brian? Remind me, there was an email from maybe it was from Bill at the uh, Bill Johnson. It might have been from Bill. Um, you referenced it earlier. He talked about different types of testing, and I, I seem to remember, I don't have the email in front of me, something, he made a statement maybe about the, uh, the fats and greases and, and that he's never seen that come out of his system or something along those lines, mm -hmm. and, and that he recommended a specific test or a couple of tests. I think it was... TSS, the suspended solids, and and maybe the bacteria. DOD. Yeah, yeah, That's, yeah. I'm looking at right, it. and 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 so, I, you know, maybe those are the two to focus on. Certainly, you know, we're all aware of the clam flat shutting down now and again, and. It always seems to be because of the bacteria, right? So that's a pretty important one. And sus suspended solids, I would think less so, but okay. I mean, it, I'm guessing suspended solid shows at least to some degree how the uh, system is operating because those are settling tanks, right? So you get a lot of solids are not working as well. Um, maybe, you know, quarterly testing, maybe can be done by the same group that, that he's already using. Um, instead of twice a year, it's four times a year, it's an extra $1,000, which it's a burden, uh, you know, on the applicant, but not an undue burden, and at least gives us, the town, a quarterly view of what's going on. The system's operating, so Christine, to your point, like, is the system in good condition? We're going to get a report from this third party that says condition, system looks good, meeting all the uh, licensing requirements. Here are these two tests. They look good as well. No worries. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. I mean, he says in, in the email that we have an excerpt of, in my opinion, a BOD test would be the useful and informative test. Um, I would be comfortable just with that as the required test, biochemical oxygen demand. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> In terms of enforcement and consequences, I don't think there are any. I mean, there, you know, if, if we give a variance, the variance, you know, exists, and if the, if the entity doesn't adhere to the terms of the variance, I'm not sure what happens. I mean, we've, just as examples, if we do a home occupation and we have the expectation that they're only opening five hours a day and they decide to open 24 hours a day and have 10 times more cars show up than we thought, you know, if they do it once, do we then take away the variance? If they do it twice, I mean, and who does that? Certainly it does, it's never come back to us while we've been on this committee. And I'm not sure anybody's ever enforced all the home occupation examples we've given. Uh, it's easier with building standards, right? If they go outside of the standards, you can tell them, you know, you gave them two feet, they went three feet, you can tell them to take it down. But I don't know what happens on ongoing enforcement standards. Maybe, Brian, you have some experience here. You can well, us. thankfully, I've never run into a case where, you know, any infraction of a special exception approval has reached the level where yeah. it had to come back to the board. But in most cases, if a special exception was approved to operate three days a week and they end up operating for five days a week, that requires them to come back to the board to amend their special exception approval. That's, that's what should happen. Does it? I mean, if it flies under the radar, sure, then no, no harm, no fall. I can only enforce what I know about, mm -hmm. right? And I can't be everywhere at once. Let me suggest this, though. If every year, and John's, as, as all food establishments, have to apply for, or renew, rather, their food handler's license, okay? If, and, and, and I, I'm just talking out loud Understood. here, just spitballing a little bit, but because there seems to be a concern. Let's just say for the sake of discussion that the board wants to place the condition of quarterly BOD testing. Mm -hmm. The first thing that's gonna happen is if 
if John gets an unsatisfactory test result, he's going to troubleshoot the system because he wants to stay in business. Or he's going to close <laughs> if he doesn't want to stay in business. So it's going to get corrected. But let's say that he gets three consecutive quarterly reports that the system is not operating and the BOD levels are out of, out of spec. The town's receiving those reports. We're going to note that. When he goes to apply for his food handler's license, that can be forwarded to the council who would approve the renewal of those food handler's licenses. They reach out to the town of Scarborough? They who? The, the people, the, him, who's giving the license? You just turn on the mic. Sorry. The, the food handler's permit is issued by the town of Scarborough. Oh, the town. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So, so the town's receiving those reports. We have those reports. We're working with John to get the system corrected, but then the next quarter he gets another failing report, and I'm just spitballing, right? We're not uh, saying that <laughs> you. Uh, so, I mean, that is a way that it can be handled. The, the, the council can say, we, we're, we've gotten several reports that are unsatisfactory. What are you going to do? Maybe it's time you replace, maybe it's inside of three years, and it's time you replace that entire system. If you replace that entire system within the next six months, we will renew your food handler's license. We'll give you a temporary whatever. They can they can make that decision. So there there is a checks and balance way to do this. It would be the same as if he had um, excessive public safety calls to the restaurant because bikers were coming in and having fights in the restaurant and public safety was there. They would bring that issue up at the time of his food handler's license renewal. So I think there's a way to, it, 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 and that's in addition to, obviously, if we see a failing test result, I'm going to call John and say, you saw this, what's going on? Yeah, I, I agree. I, I, you know, so, I mean, that's how, we, that's how we operate for anybody, right? I, it, it's it, not it, one strike, you're out. It's... There, there's such an intense degree of public interest in the marsh and in water quality that merely ha a report to the town of a, of a failing water quality test will set off, you know, it'll, it will set off all <laughs> kinds. There'll be a lot, uh, there'll, there will be intense interest in it. So, um, yeah, I, I think your point is, is well taken. Does anyone want to make a... Proposal. <clears throat> so far, we've talked about a variety of different options. Would somebody like to at least put a motion on the table, and then we can? Would, wouldn't you like to go down through the items and? Well, first? we have. To, this would be the first one. The first one. Okay. Yes. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> are, you know, have we met this criteria? Um, that the proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhealthful conditions by reason of sewage, disposal, emissions to the air or water, or other aspects of its design or operations. We've had a lot of discussion about this without having said we're talking about this, but as, <coughs> as Kyle noted at the beginning, I mean, this is the, the key issue. So does anybody have a, a motion with respect to testing that he or she would like to advance? Joe? I'll start this off. What was the name of the test, Kyle? Just remind me, it was a B. BOD. 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 Okay. So it, the, the property does have, currently have a valid overboard OBD system, a license system that's been checked, um, and that we all know it needs to be properly maintain, maintained, um, and that the repairs that were re required have been done with the exception of the overflow switch. Um, so what I propose is in order to ensure that we're, we're meeting this requirement is that the condition of license is that for the licenses issued, they show that that um, switch has been corrected and that going forward that they're required to do quarterly BOD tests submitted to the town in a timely fashion. Do I hear a second? Second. Second. Is there any discussion with respect to that When motion? you say switch, do you mean the alarm? The alarm, I'm Okay, sorry. I just wanted to clarify that. Good. Thanks, Michelle. Any discussions or? Okay. 
In that case, could I have a show of hands for the approval that, or the finding that the applicant has met criteria number A that we just discussed with the motion for testing that Joe has advanced and seconded? All those in favor? Any opposed? No, we're all set. You get that, Doreen? Thank you. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> and Joe, I'll start with you. Could you do number B? Sure. The proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing or foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. Property has been used for this use uh, as a restaurant for yeah, decades. Um, I would expect that uh, we're not going to see any change um, from what we've had in the past. Uh, so from that perspective, I, uh, and there's no expansion of the property. So I think uh, that it meets this criteria. It's not going to create any additional or unsafe traffic conditions. <clears throat> any other comments on that? It was brought up that, you know, it might, that may change if there's a restructuring of Route 1, but as it stands currently, no unsafe conditions. Okay. Anybody else? Hearing none. <clears throat> Everybody, or let me, by a show of hands again, does people believe that this criteria has been met? Any opposed? Nope. We're all set on that one. Kyle, could you do C? Uh, the third criteria is the proposed use will not create public safety problems, which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree in municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. I think this criteria is met. Uh, the, um, per, the appeal is to continue a decades old use, which there's no record to indicate has ever created any public safety problems. Are there any other comments on that? <clears throat> Hearing none. Everybody believe the criteria has been met? Show of hands. Thank you. <clears throat> Michelle, would you like to do the next one? Sure. Uh, the proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have any adverse effect on water supplies. Um, so they use Portland Water District um, and um, it's completely paved. Um, there was talk of, you know, floodwaters, and we went way into depth if there's where this um, OBD system, you know, dumps out, but we've kind of exhausted that in A. Um, mm -hmm. I do not believe it's going to result in any sedimentation or erosion um, any further than, um, you know, what it's already been used for for decades, like Kyle said. Anybody have any other comments on this criteria finding? Okay. By show of hands, could we indicate who's approved? Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Christine, would you like to do the next one? E, the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures and density of development. Um, as the petitioner stated, they're far enough away from any other neighborhood structures. They've been there for a number of years. They're on a main road. They have easy access. And I don't see any um, negative impact. Any other comments on that? All set. <clears throat> Again, show of hands for those consistent with the finding. <clears throat> I'll do the <clears throat> next one. Um, if located in a shoreland zone as depicted on this town of Scarborough official shoreland zoning map, the proposed use will comply with all of the requirements of the town of Scarborough shoreland zoning ordinance. Um, this one is in the shoreland zone um, overlay district. It, it is non-conforming with respect to the buffers and setbacks. Uh, and as an existing non-conforming use and structure, it will have to abide by and adhere to all of the requirements of the Scarborough Shoreland Zoning Ordinance. Any other comments on that one? None? Show of hands that the findings been met? Okay. 
<clears throat> Joe, you want to do G? Sure. The proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise. No, you and jumped out. up to E. Oh, and did I jump? Yes, G as in George. What do we got, G? Yeah, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Where did I miss? Oh, the applicant has sufficient right title interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. Uh, yeah, they provided a copy of the lease agreement, and um, so they have right um, to use the property as a restaurant. Okay. Can I jump in on this one? I think we sh I think we have to just be clear that the the applicant we're going to have to we're going to have to issue this this permit or this mm -hmm. I guess the variance. appeal this yeah. variance. It's, it's, yeah, it's not a variance. No. What, <laughs> what is it? It's like, what, what are we giving? Yeah, We're giving the granting of an appeal. <laughs> the special approving exception. The appeal. Approving the, the, the approval of the appeal will have to go to the LLC rather than to the applicant. Uh, yeah. Because the applicant doesn't have title right or interest. So, so okay. in other words, you're mirror, mirroring the name on the lease agreement. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, so I think we just just I think we I think we find that this criteria is met, but we just have to be clear that when we actually approve this appeal, we are, are approving the appeal of Seesaw LLC. So saucy, saucy. 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 <laughs> very saucy. C can we word that as John DeSanto doing business as Saucy? That's LLC? probably the. Would that yeah. make sense? But I think. Because well, that way you get the applicant's if, name. If he's, if he's the principal of the LLC, the LLC is, you signed on behalf of the LLC, the, the mm -hmm. lease. Yeah. The, the LLC is, is the leaseholder. Yeah, and maybe it would be doing business as John DeS Or Ann John's or, or what have you. Or but Ann John's, well, Ann John's Restaurante. Okay. Ann John's Restaurante. I can't spell restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> just, just put an E on it. Yeah. <clears throat> Kyle, would you take us through the next one? Or is it H? Oh, did we vote on? Oh June? no, we did not vote. I'm sorry. Um, thank you for jumping in. <clears throat> uh, with the, Kyle's condition with respect to the issuance of the final decision here on our part, everybody okay with that? Show of hands. Finding. Anybody opposed? No, we're all set. Now, Kyle. Thank you. H. Um. This criteria is the applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to subsection 5 of this section. Um, as the um, long-time operator of the restaurant there, I think applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards and also to comply with the um, water quality testing condition that we have imposed. Any other comments on this one? No, nope. good. All in favor? Any opposed? No. Nope. <coughs> and um, Michelle, could you do the last one for us? Sure. The proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to generation of noise and hours of operation. Um, currently, he expects to um, operate this as a restaurant again, um, like it was before. Um, from four to nine with no live music inside or outside of the restaurante. And um, yeah, I, it may, so it's actually gonna have less noise than it did before when it was a business as lunch will not likely be served in the foreseeable future. Okay, any other comments on this one? You I just none? have a question. Oh, sure, Michelle, yes. Christine. Well, I don't know why I keep calling. I apologize. I forgive you. I'm sorry. No, okay. so Thank you. <laughs> so um, uh, are you com is the license for four to nine, is that on the license, Brian? Or can he change his hours? What license? But for the food license. Is to run the restaurant. The food license doesn't stipulate that sort of stuff. Okay, well, this being stipulated here, is he required to come back if he changes his Correct. hours? Correct, yeah. Okay. If he was going to change his hours substantially, 
doesn't mean one day a week. Maybe he stays open later or something. But yeah, if he right. was going to change and if he start, was serving, start serving, lunch serving lunch every, every okay. day. Thank you. Yeah, he would just have to come back and amend that approval. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Anybody, any further questions, comments? All in favor of the finding having been met? Okay. <clears throat> So now I guess we consider the application as a whole. Is that correct, Brian? Yep. <clears throat> Are there, can I have a motion to approve um, the application? Uh, I move to approve the appeal, appeal with the condition. I second that. Is that what you're looking for? <laughs> Well, I was just thinking with the condition, and uh, the condition with the, with, with the condition we added to factor to criteria A. Okay, thank you. Um, I've just got one comment. I was hoping that I was hoping that I, I was going to receive the the comment in writing. Um, the technical division staff, town engineer, and and um, our sustainability coordinator asked if, if we could also, and I'll just throw this out there for the board to consider, you, it's your decision. They would like to have all of the items that Bill Johnson noted, which includes the alarm, but also the concrete walls of the treatment plant has some surface cracks that need sealing. They'd, they asked if that would, if that would also be um, taken care of as a part of the condition of this, this approval. I think that's appropriate. Now, this w number two says by the end of 2025, <clears throat> do we want to say um, for all of these things? I would say by maybe by this, by the, I mean, you can do what you want, but I would say rather than the end of 2025, maybe before the start of, of the 2025 summer season or something like that. Okay. But I mean, I think Mr. DeSanto has indicated that he does intend to take care of that. We just don't have a time frame for it. Mr. Johnson has said by the end of 2025, seems like kind of a long time. Well, but, for that one item, not for all three. Yeah, it looks like it's item. just for number two. It's like just for number one two. And two. One and three yeah. need to be addressed. Right, should be addressed immediately. But it's up to you guys okay. whether you, you know, again, I'm, they, they, they would like the board to consider using those recommendations as conditions of their approval. Again, um, that's their request. That's up to the board to determine if they want And they, they did also recommend, sorry to bring this up so late, and we asked him, and I don't think it's in the condition, um, that he needs to replace the whole system should it fail within three years. Do we need to add that as a condition? Yeah, I, I, did we yeah, even, we didn't even really yeah. talk about. We didn't, but if, I mean, if the system were to fail in that catastrophic way, he would lose his DEP license and the DEP would then impose okay. whatever criteria he would have to meet. So we don't need to add that in as I a don't condition? Think we do. Okay. Yeah, I'm inclined yeah. to add the three year failure okay. condition. I think it's overkill. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, question. No. 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 A question okay. regarding the, the comments on, on the report, Brian. Am I to understand that he, he needs to take these steps just to keep the license up to date with DEP? I, I, don't, I don't know if that's... I, these are recommendations that Mr. Johnson, the inspector, has, has cited. I don't know that if... if, if Mr. DeSanto was to ignore any and all of these, I don't know how that would impact. I can't answer that question because I'm not DEP and I have no control over what they can I, do. Can I ask Mr. DeSanto a question then? Sure, I don't see why not. You, you planning on taking care of all three of these? Then I think we should make him a condition and a license <laughs> and just be done with it. Okay, so we have on the table a motion. If, I, one more thing. Uh, if, if you're going to yeah. speak, probably yeah. wouldn't. Sorry. <laughs> uh, those three items are, although they seem serious, they're not um, the concrete wall that the, not the wall, it's the surface. It just needs to be seal coated with a masonry. My cousin Frank DiDonato is a mason and he'll take care of that. 
um, the cover on the discharge pump station, it's old. And um, it's got a handle on it. It works. I painted it, but it's a little rusty. So um, I can go to any um, fabrication shop and have that made minimal amount of money. It's, it's only a, a cover of uh, two feet by two feet square with a handle on it. And um, the high level alarm's already on order for the, um, pump, uh, the pump station. Um, I should have that within a week. <clears throat> Mr. Chair, if I, if I yep. could, just getting back to the Planning Board's advisory opinion. Um, number one on that item was the weekly monitoring. You guys have discussed that yes. and you've modified that. So that one's taken care of. We, we've already got the, the current inspection report from Bill Johnson, so number two is taken care of. So the only item left on that list is the overboard discharge failure in three years of full system replacement. And we just talked about that. And, that it, and, and so you're... I, I just want to be clear so, so when we're writing this up, the decision up, what are we doing about number three? I, I don't think it's, we've decided it wasn't necessary. It's, okay. It fails, it fails, they have to go and replace it anyway, so. Okay. So, <clears throat> so we have on the floor a motion. Um, can we have an amendment to the motion to accept these three conditions? Yes. Thank you, second? I'll second that. Okay. Now, <clears throat> all in favor then of approving the appeal subject to the first condition that we imposed with respect to testing and subject to the three conditions with respect to the alarm, the cover, and the foundation wall of the sidewall. Um, all in favor? Any opposed? Nope. Christine, do we we're all set. Do we have to do a roll call? Do go down oh, do we have to go do a roll call on um, this do one? Do you want to voice vote, Doreen? Or it's not necessary? No. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. You have your, you have your <coughs> decision, and um, you'll get an order, the final order on that uh, next month at our meeting. No, I mean, the decision is good yeah, now. I, the yeah, this the written decision order. will be good. And you will receive a written copy of that decision within seven days. Okay. You, you should have a final CO inspection before you open. So that's something you want to schedule with the coach department. What about the liquor license? That, yeah, that, um, what we'll do is I'll notify Kristen, the town clerk, that this got approved. You've got those applications already in? Yeah, they're in a paper. Yeah, so I'll just let her know this is approved. And that should show up on the council's next agenda, I'm thinking. But you can check with her as far as when that's scheduled. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> the next item on the agenda are any comments from the zoning board? Any issues that are outstanding that we need to discuss? Should, we, just, should we impeach the guy who's in Argentina? <laughs> I will just mention one thing, Mr. Chair, and it doesn't matter now, but our, our uh, planner, our, our Town planner, senior planner Eric Sanderson has taken a new position. He left us on Friday. Uh, He's headed north to my my part of the state. So uh, with a new job in in his hands, uh, he's taken a job with the Land Use Planning Commission, uh, Regulatory Planning Commission, and um, his his uh, fiance is taking a position with um, Prescott Hospital. I think it's wow. like Tamic or Tamic is yeah, up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're uh, so they're headed north, which wow. is not. Normal, <laughs> but we, we wish him luck. <laughs> well, that's true. Anything else? Good. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Good. Thank you all guys very Good much. Good job, Richard. Yeah. Thank you.